It's a lot of great comics here tonight. There are, there are a lot of great comics here tonight. And um, I want to introduce the first of many, Nick Bramall. So give it up for Nick, guys. Woo! I'm not going to sing. If I fall asleep on stage, just leave me be. Uh, I was at the Brewer game last night, and uh, a friend drove from Oshkosh to Milwaukee and back, so that means I drank a lot. Um, and that's always a good feeling in the morning uh, when you feel like you have to shave your tongue, and you know you're going to work at a public high school. Uh, <laughs> it's a good example to set for the kids. We had our fourth fight in three days at school today. We had five cop cars there. We had three students let out in handcuffs. So anything you've heard me say before about being a public high school teacher and not agreeing with the fact that some legislators want to give us guns, I'm shifting the other way at this point. I will, I'll take a gun at this point. But we did learn today how administration feels, and they will support us now if there's a fight going on. And you run full speed at one of the kids and just perfectly form tackle them. Mm -hmm. They support us now for that. So now that I know that, work is going to be a lot better. Um, this is an alarming thing to say as an educator, uh, but the world is getting dumber and it is uh, worrying me. Especially because I'm the one educating today's youth and they're getting out there and being stupid. Two things happened this past week to show me that we are being just we're dumbing down as a society, which is weird because at this point we have the technology where we have all the information that's ever happened at our fingertips on our phone. We can look up anything. The other day, I went I had six clicks, all it took for me to go from uh, Reggie White to Abraham Lincoln. If you had told me that when I was seven years old, I would have probably kicked you in the nuts, but you can do that now. <laughs> But we had a kid, uh, our school policy says no, no cell phones. They can't have cell phones at all. They can have them during passing time and at lunch, that's it. By the way, yeah, that fight was recorded. All the fights were recorded by the kids. There's like eight different videos out there. You can look them up on YouTube, it's great. You'll see me in the background one of them I'm wearing ugly pants. Um, but anyway, so there's, they can't have phones. And one kid, one gentleman in one of my classes, and I'll use the term gentleman loosely, uh, violated it so many times the first 11 days of school that they took his phone away and he can't have a phone at all. So we're in class, we're working on stuff, and I, I always say, you know, so-and-so, do you have your phone? No, I left it at home. Okay. He has to go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, you gotta leave your cell phone there. I told you I don't have it. All right, I will leave you. Then I told him at 12.10 today, five minutes before lunch, uh, we will we'll have some free time. Everyone gets this worksheet done, we'll have free time and the clock in my room doesn't work. Again, public high school. So I have a non-working clock on my wall. And finally I said, oh, it's gonna be time for lunch. Uh, does anyone know what time it is? And what does my man do? Pulls his phone out of his pocket, says 12.10, we get free time. I'm like, dude, you can't have a phone. And instead of getting mad, he just had that look on his face where he looked at me, he looked at his phone, he looked at the floor, and with disdain in his eyes, he said, dude, you tricked me. And I said, yep. Check your move, buddy. <laughs> Another thing that happened to me this past week to show that we are idiots as a society is I went to the post office because I had to mail a letter because I'm that old. And I had to get there before 6 o'clock and there was a vehicle in front of me. About a 15-year-old woman in her little car. She took a piece, put it in. Took a piece of mail, put it in took a piece of mail, put it in. Took the fourth piece of mail, it fell out of her hands onto the ground. Problem at this point. So she's got to like shimmy out of her, she has this much room to get out of her car. She wasn't a small lady. She's able to get out. <sighs> Takes a deep breath, picks up the letter, puts it in the slot. Now she's got to get back in. Opens the door as much as she can. Shimmies in, sits down. Closes the door, takes a deep breath. Gets a piece of mail, puts it in the slot. Gets a piece of mail, puts it in the slot. And I'm like, oh, you added two steps to that situation right there. You could have just taken the rest of your mail, put it in the slot at the same time. You didn't have to get your fat ass out of the car. Pick up the mail, get back in, and resume what you were doing. 
And by the way, her vote counts the same as mine. That's what the shitty part of that situation is. <laughs> Equal vote in that instance. I don't like to talk about politics when I'm on stage because it's the crowds get uncomfortable with it. I don't like doing it. I mean, I'll do it, but I just don't like it. Uh, the other day, I decided I had to stick to what I believe in. Uh, even though it's very controversial, a lot of people don't like it, but I went online and I bought myself a hat. I bought myself a red hat. I bought myself a red hat with four words on it in white letters. Controversial hat. I bought myself a hat that said, hot dogs are sandwiches. <laughs> Whatever you thought that hat said before, this hat causes more arguments than that hat you were thinking of. Because if you want to get people pissed off, screw with their sandwich hierarchy what they believe a sandwich is. Do you think a hot dog is a sandwich? Do you think a hot dog is a sandwich? I'll go along with you. you go along with anyone? Did anyone not think a hot dog is a sandwich? Good. Or, okay, don't think a hot dog is a sandwich. What is a sandwich? A sandwich is like two pieces of bread with something in the middle, sometimes meat, sometimes like a fruit preservative or something like that with another fruit piece of bread on top. Argue with people, hot dog is a sandwich. Well, it's not a hot dog, it's its own thing. It's got its bun, the bun is connected, but you never had a fucking hot dog with a bun broken half. Now you have two pieces of bread. Now it's a sandwich by your definition. Okay, I'll, I'll go. Let's not worry about the bread or anything. Jelly beans between pancakes is a sandwich. <laughs> it is. You get two pieces, it's right there. You want, you want to make people uncomfortable? Pop tarts are sandwiches. Yeah, now people are starting to squirm in there. I'll argue with people all the time, and they're like, oh, you need a sandwich. Bread, is, is, pop tart is a pastry. It's just because the bread is sweet doesn't mean it's not a sandwich. Maybe you settle down, or like, okay, I'm sorry I said those things, but uh, I'm gonna go make myself some soup. I get some cinnamon toast crunch, and I pour the milk in. Because <laughs> cereal is soup, right? Yeah, cereal is soup. What is soup? Soup is a liquid? No, soup has got to be hot. It's, it's, it's got like a stock base to it. There's like noodles, there's meat, there's vegetables. That's what soup is. All right, you ever had a grilled cheese sandwich before? What, what kind of soup do people like with grilled cheese sandwiches? Tomato soup. There's nothing in there. It's just tomato soup. Now, if you're going to say tomato soup is soup, orange juice is soup. I don't even I don't give a shit. About <laughs> orange juice is soup. <laughs> That really makes people, uh, that makes them squirm. Um, I, I did a joke in the past, and I'm going to end up with this, because uh, this is now the third time this has happened. But um, two years ago, there was a couple in Las Vegas that got married. No, this was, the no, first one was Kansas. First one was Kansas. They got married, and uh, they got married on a Friday, and on Sunday they drove home, and they got in a car accident, and they both died. Very sad thing. Very sad thing. Then about six months later, a couple got married in Las Vegas, and that night, they went skydiving, and they died. Both of them died right there six hours after they got married. And I'm like, wow, that's sad. So I found out that uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a couple in California that got married, and an hour after they got married, they were in a car accident, and they died. Very sad thing. And I feel for them, I feel for their family. But the person I feel for the most is the one guy at each of those weddings that you know leaned over to someone and said, I give it six months. <laughs> All right, my name is Nick. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. That was awesome. All right, next we have, uh, I forgot.